Hi guys, welcome for this new episode of Eat the Blogs and I am Julian, your host. And today it's going to be a new video on the series about how to create a to-do list application with Solidity and Node.js. For the last episode, we started to create our smart contract and for this episode, we're going to finish the smart contract. All right, so open your text editor and open the project where we left it last time. And we're going to open our to-do smart contract file. So here we have our task uh, struct. Well, it's actually an array of tasks. Um, and we had this problem that when we want to return this dynamic array of tasks, uh, Web3 does not understand what it is, and so it doesn't work. So we cannot use this solution. On top of it, if we want to retrieve a single task with this technique, we would have to loop through all the entry of the array until we find the matching ID. Um, so that would be quite expensive in terms of gas. And we're trying really hard to minimize our gas consumption when we write Solidity contracts. So we will not follow this approach. So instead, what we will do is we will create a mapping. So mapping is a little bit like an object in JavaScript with key and value. So it will map some ID, which will be our type integer. and those IDs will map to task. And I will call uh, this mapping task very simply. Uh, so I will get rid of the previous declaration, this dynamic array of tasks. We will not use it anymore. And another thing that we're going to need now is the last ID that was used for this mapping, uh, because this mapping is not going to manage the those IDs for us. So we're going to create a variable that we're going to call a uh, last ID. So it's going to be an integer. So you int last ID. Okay. And uh, we're going to initialize this last ID to zero. So we're going to create a constructor function that's going to be invoked only at contract creation. So a function uh, to do, and it's going to be a public function. We open the curly braces and very simply, we just set the last ID uh, to, um, to zero. Okay. Oh, actually I meant to call this last task ID. So let's correct this last task ID. Okay, cool. So uh, let's say we just created our contract. So we set is this last track ID to zero. And now what we want to do is to create our first task. Um, so for this, we're going to have to modify our create task function here. Um, so now we're going to um, create a task object, but instead of uh, um, um, putting this task, ob task object in an array, what we will do is put this task object in uh, the mapping that we just created. So uh, let's get rid of this parenthesis here and of this uh, push method. And um, we're going to uh, create a new entry. So for this, uh, we're going to index our task with the last task ID variable. Uh, and this is going to receive the task and uh, we need to get rid of a parenthesis on the right. Uh, let me do this. Okay. Um, and uh, what else do we need to do? Um, and so the first parameter of our task uh, here, task uh, uh, constructor, if we can say it like this, uh, it's going to be the ID of the task. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be last task ID. Okay. Um, and what we want to, to do uh, is to increment this uh, last task ID. So we're going to last task ID plus plus uh, because uh, next time we call this function create task, we don't want to uh, override our previous entry. Uh, so we need to increment this variable. And uh, and what else do we need? 
Um, and also what we will need is to fire an event. So, so far we haven't talked of events, but basically um, events are used in Solidity um, to log some information about what happened in a contract. Uh, event can be created by Solidity contract, uh, but they cannot be accessed from those contracts. So I know it seems a little bit confusing, but uh, usually those um, events are used by outside program to monitor what's going on uh, in this contract. Um, so um, what we're going to do here is fire an event. Uh, so we're going to create an event, let's say uh, task, uh, task created. Oh, let's check that is how I define it. Uh, event task created, yes. Okay, so task created. So the first thing that this task created um, event will receive is the, the last uh, task ID. So last task ID. Okay, and we probably need to uh, decrement this uh, by one because we've just incremented it here last task ID so uh, actually or oh, or oh, what we can do even more simple we will decrement the last task ID after the task created event so we don't need to do this okay maybe more simple like this so task created last task ID then the second thing is we're going to pass the date uh, so it's going to be now and content and the author and the done status which will be false initially okay uh but now we have a problem is because a task created uh, is not a known symbol because we haven't defined it anywhere so we need to do this so let's define uh what is this event so we're going to use the event keyword and then uh, the name of the event so task created and after we're going to define the type of value that we're going to pass to this event so the first type is an integer so it's going to be a uint then the second type is also going to be an integer because data are represented as integer in solidity then the next thing will be the content which will be a string then uh, the author also a string and finally uh, it will be a boolean value that will indicate the status of the task so done or not done so here uh, we'll specify with the keyword bool, okay? Uh, so uh, now we can create a task using our new uh, mapping object and we use this last uh, task ID integer to uh, know uh, at which key we want to create uh, each task, fire an event and finally we increment this integer, okay? Uh, the next thing we want to do is to get a specific task. So let's scroll down to our get task function and see what needs to be changed. Uh, okay, so this get task function receive an ID as an argument and it needs to return all the fields of the task uh, object that we want to retrieve. Uh, so the way we did it previously, uh, it's going to work. Uh, because uh, basically here we um, we call we refer to a specific task um, by using its ID, uh, and so this is uh, totally going to work with our mapping. However, um, there is a problem because we might try to retrieve a task that does not exist. So we need to make sure that this task exists first. So how do you do this? We're going to use a if statement and if the task indexed by its ID has a field equal to zero, it means that our task does not exist. Indeed, uh, in Solidity, uh, when you create a mapping, even for, uh, for the key that do not exist, they have their field set by default to zero. So if we have this ID set to zero, then we know that our task doesn't exist and we will use the revert keyword, which will uh, basically stop the transaction. Okay, but we have a problem because the way that we define last task ID is not going to work for this check because the first last task ID will be zero. So the first task that will be created will be indexed by an ID of zero. 
So for the first task, actually, its ID will actually be zero. So if we leave uh, this if like this, we will not be able to access the first task. So we will need to modify the way we define our last task ID. Um, so how can we uh, prevent our problem? Well, actually, it's quite simple. We just need to uh, switch uh, the initial uh, assignment of last task ID from zero to one. So basically, we will start to um, to create task with the ID of one. And so it will be compatible with our check to see if the task actually exists. OK, so we have this fixed. OK, so let's go back to um, to our uh, function get task. OK, so if task ID uh, dot ID is zero, then you revert when you stop the transaction. OK. Um, it's possible that we might need to uh, use this check for different function of our contract. So it might be actually be actually more clean to create what we call a modifier. So uh, let's scroll down. And at the very bottom, uh, we're going to create a modifier. Uh, and we're going to call this modifier uh, task uh, exist. Uh, OK, task. Oops, sorry. Task exist, and it's going to receive an ID. And basically, we're going to uh, cut and paste this if statement here. So let's cut it, and let's paste it in a modifier. Okay. And then we're going to add the underscore. Uh, statement okay so this will work okay so what is a modifier in solidity so a modifier is a sort of a piece of code that you can run before you run a function and um, it's going to execute first and when it's done executing uh, it's going to execute the function that you're actually calling so here it's uh, the the, the, the function that we're actually calling is going to execute where we put this underscore. And we're going to copy paste the name of this modifier to our get task function here. And we're going to pass it uh, just the ID. So basically, when we create, uh, when we, sorry, when we invoke in get, this get task function, uh, before it executes the function, it's going to call this modifier task exist and it's going to pass it the ID. And if the task actually exists, exist, uh, we're going to execute the function. But if it doesn't exist, then it will not execute the function and it will stop here. So that's what we want. Okay. Uh, and uh, what else we need to change? So let's scroll down. So here we used to have a um, get task function, but um, it wasn't able to return an array of tasks before, and and it's also not going to work well with our, our mapping of task. Um, so we're just going just to give up on the idea of returning um, an an array. What we will do, uh, sorry, an array of a uh, of task uh, or a dynamic structure of task. So what we will do instead is that first we will ask our smart contract to give us the list of task IDs. And after, once we get this uh, on our front end app, then we're going to uh, call this get task function that we've just modified with all the ID that we got from the smart contract. So instead of doing it uh, in one time and just saying, okay, give me all the tasks that you have. Well, we do it in two time. We first give me all the task ID you have, and then I'm going to uh, ask you to give me all those tasks one by one. So uh, how are we going to do this? We're going to create a function uh, get task IDs. And uh, this function, um, it's going to be a public function. Uh, it's going to be a constant function, which means read only. Uh, and it's going to return an array of integer, which will be a task ID. So we open the curly braces and we're going to very simply 
just return a task ID variable and we need to define this task ID variable. So let's scroll up where we define our state variable here. Uh, and we're going to define another variable, which will be this integer of IDs. So it will be task IDs. OK. And now we need to make sure that this uh, task, uh, this, uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's not a right syntax. Uh, so here has to be declared like this. It's in a dynamic array of integer. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to work like this. Okay. Um, and now we need to make sure that this array is populated. So let's scroll down to our create task function. And basically every time we create a function, we also need to uh, put the new ID into this task ID array. So just after we uh, we create our, our task object here, we're going to uh, uh, refer to this task IDs array, and we're going to use the push method, which is available on array, and we're going to push our last task ID. Okay, and so this way we make sure that these task IDs uh, stay updated when we create a new task. And last thing I want to do is to actually change this last task ID because I realized uh, the way I did it here is not the way I originally planned to do it. So what I was originally planning to do is to increment this last task ID first and to originally set it to zero. So we create the contract, last task ID start at zero, then we create a task, so last task ID switch to one uh, and and we um, in this task um, mapping, we create a new entry with the, um, the ID one uh, and, and the function continue to execute. And the next time we execute this uh, create task function is going to increment this last task ID to two uh, and so forth and so on. So it's also going to work. That's it for today. We finished the smart contract. So now what we need to do is to create the front end application. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. And for this, we're going to use Node.js. If you like this channel, you can subscribe, you can share, you can give me a like, or you can write something in the comment. You can check out the video description if you want links to the GitHub or other information. I hope to see you in the next episode and it's time for me to tell you bye-bye.